we will begin with student poetry, what we're here for. And first on my list, I would like to introduce to you Erin Webb. But also, uh, what you're doing is paying attention to film these days, uh, that she really likes movie making, because uh, her mom is involved with it. And what do you do with movie making? Do you, uh, well, I act a little bit. So come a little closer. I act a little bit, and um, my mom makes a few movies, so I get to be in most of them. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty exciting. And there was recently a movie made by her mom here in town here in Hopkinton called Soccer Moms. Yeah. A musical, a musical drama, a musical comedy, <laughs> and um, and I think you also wrote a screenplay. Is that right? Uh, yes, yeah, 2008, I think. Um, uh, we entered it in a um, in a, a contest for it, but I didn't win though. Um, I forget, I forget I forget what it was called, but it was something about my dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, dogs are a great subject to write about. So, lots of exciting things going on, and you're finishing what grade? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, so over at Hopkins? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so, Erin's brought a few poems to share with us, and um, so I will step back and let Erin take the mic and share her poetry. So, this first poem is called The Trees by Erin Webb. The trees, sprinkled with powdered sugar. Sway left and right as the snow dancers glide down the white winter river. The trees, dipped in white chocolate, smooth and sweet, dance to the sound of tiny white snowflakes falling from the sky and gently landing on the soft snow. The trees, covered in a soft white blanket, wave hello to the moon as it rises from underground to show its glimmering shine to everything and everyone on earth. Yeah, um, this next one is called Summer Season by Aaron Webb. Summer. Boiling, flaming, torturing hot. Too sunny to see. Sweat running down my nose. Craving snow. Craving cold. For white blankets that cover the earth and for footprints that melt away. Winter. Okay. Um, this next one is called um, Milk. Milk. Disgusting. As it is prepared, being poured, I gulp, I shiver, it stinks. Too bad I'm not allergic. Too bad I'm not lactose intolerant like my mom. Too bad I have to drink it. It tastes terrible, like rotten eggs, dirty socks. Cold, too cold, slimy, gooey, gross. Milk. As it pours down my throat, I gag, closing my eyes, swallowing, pretending it's sweet bubbly soda. I open my eyes and look down. The cup is still only half empty. It's, al it's also not soda. Bad aftertaste. I rush to eat something better tasting. Salmon will do. Much better. Now I try not to breathe through my nose, not to smell it. Then I pick up my glass and chug the rest down. Rapidly, I reach for more salmon. Way better. The milk is gone. Now on to broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you really don't like milk, is that right? No. <laughs> and is your milk actually gooey? <laughs> well, it tastes like that. It tastes gooey to you, and you actually prefer broccoli and salmon to milk. Well, it says uh, now onto broccoli, meaning like it's a bad thing, but salmon, like usually um, uh, we have salmon with milk, so I um, usually take a bite of that as soon as, soon as I um, drink the milk because it really tastes bad. Uh-huh, okay. Well, it's good you have a coping mechanism for getting the milk down, because milk, milk is uh, good for you. <laughs> and it's also good to get that frustration about something she doesn't really like to do, but knows it's good for her, and write a poem about it. <laughs> Makes it go down a little easier, I bet, maybe. So, and, so what's your favorite food to eat? Um, probably... Kettle corn, but I can't have kettle, kettle corn anymore since I have braces, braces now. Uh -huh. so. Well, I think that's time for a new poem, kettle corn, when I can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Erin. <laughs> Could you uh, please take a rose? And just the top have a little thorny, and everyone can give a hand to Erin as she... Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes, that's okay. 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 All right, so now you see how it goes. And we thank Erin for being our first person up here. 
And we're now calling Mira Chadha to come up and share some poetry. And we'll give her a welcoming applause. And I know, Mira, uh, you've been here before to wake up and smell the poetry. You read a poem around the holidays, and it's actually on the uh, HCAM uh, website online. It was wonderful. I want you to just come up a little closer. And I know that you're busy writing um, yeah. in school and after school because you like it that much. Um, not really after school, but mostly in school. Oh, in school. Okay. Are you liking it? Okay. Yeah, I like it. Uh huh. And I know you like uh, art. Yeah. I, I saw you at an art stroll. And do mm -hmm. you do a little artwork yourself? Uh yes. Uh huh. What kind do you like the best? I don't know. Drawing. Drawing maybe. Or mm. clay. Or clay. And what school are you at? Elmwood. Elmwood School. And again, what grade? Third. Third grade. Okay. So different than Mrs. Martin's class. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad that you came here. Um, and I'm wondering, so you do a little drawing and you do some writing. What's your other favorite thing to do um, when you're reading. out of school? Reading. Reading. Uh-huh. And do you have a favorite book? Uh, not really. No. Well, plenty of time to figure that out. And there's a great big library down the street. Mm -hmm. So I hope you have a fun summer reading. And do you have a few poems that you've written yeah. in your classroom? Um, yes, all of these are written in my class. In your class, okay. And um, can you come up closer, closer, closer? There you go. And could I think, uh, how many poems is it here? Um, three. Okay, three poems also. And so we'll, uh, you can read one, pause, and then go to the next one. And uh, then we'll applause for you at the end. How's that? Yeah. Poetry Hides. Poetry hides in chlorine from the pool. Poetry hides in art class at school. Poetry hides in baby birds chirping. Poetry hides in growing sets burping. Poetry hides in big tennis courts. Poetry hides in dark chocolate tort. Poetry hides in the sounds of the trees. Poetry hides in jangling keys. Poetry hides in anything anywhere. Poetry hides in everything everywhere. The sun. The sun is like a leaping fire, way too hot to go near. As it rises in the east, birds wake and owls sleep. As it sets in the west, crickets chirp and dogs rest. In the day, the sun is a ball full of fire, but at night, the sun sinks down, 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 giving the moon a chance to shine with all his might. And then this is a poem I wrote when the Kenyans were coming to our school. We were like learning about Kenya, so we all wrote poems. It's giraffe. Some animals eat only meat, not I. Some animals love to sleep, not I. Some animals hate to run, not I. But some can live in the heat, that's I. I am the giraffe with brownish yellow spots. I am the giraffe who loves to run a lot. I am the twigger in Swahili words. I am the twigger on the hot savanna dirt. All right, thank you. Can everyone give a hand? Thank you, Mira. So was it um, an activity to write a poem when the um, Kenyans came in your class? No, we had to do it. Like, for What's that? Sort of. You had to do it yeah. in your yes. class? Yeah. And did you share them with the Kenyan runners? Um, no, we put them outside so like they could see oh, them. Oh, put them outside. Uh -huh. Well, I hope that they saw them. That's a great idea. Maybe, maybe they could hear, hear them some year. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Well, I thank you very much. And I will give you a rose to take with you, and thank you for your poetry. One more hand for Mira Chadha. And now I would like to call Liam Palacios. And as he's walking down, we'll warm him up with a clapping. Hi, Liam. How are you? Good. Good. Well, it's good to see you. Liam, you were here last year at the student poetry reading, mm -hmm. and you're a whole year older now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how old are you? Eleven. Eleven years old, and you've been writing a few poems since last year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have a favorite one that you have written about? Mm, no. No? Uh -huh. I remember there was a Frankenstein poem that you brought up last time. That was uh, pretty funny, because I think Frankenstein was in your bedroom or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you do besides write poetry? What do you like uh, to do? Read. Read? And are you playing baseball? I think I remember something about that baseball out there across the street, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, it's good to do different things, right? Um, and have a little time outside and a little time inside. And um, so what, what do you think is a good thing about poetry? I'm just curious. Uh, I don't really know. 
Hmm. You're still thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. What could be so good about poetry? I like to question people about that and get different answers. So maybe maybe next year you'll tell me. But I know you have um, two poems. No, uh, one. One poem for us. And uh, can you tell us the title and just scooch up a little closer, closer? Uh, the title is Scary Dream. Scary Dream. So is it really scary? Not really. Okay, just a little scary, so I think we can handle it here. And I'll back up a little bit so Liam can share his scary dream. Scary dream. Going down a water slide. Where the heck is the bottom, I cried. Another twist, another turn. There's the bottom. Oh no, it's full of piranhas. I woke up sweating. <laughs> Okay, has anyone ever been in a pool with piranhas? <laughs> no, not me. That is a bit of a scary dream. Was it a real dream or an imagined dream? Uh, imagine. Imagine. That's the fun about writing. You can pretend and you can write about that. It doesn't have to always be real, too. So I'd like to thank you for sharing your scary dream poem and uh, send you off with a rose, just like Richard Hoffman. Thank you very much. And one more hand for Liam Palacio. And now I would like to call up Ali Palacios. Help me welcome Ali. Hi, Ali. Hello. What I wanted to say, um, I know of some friends who exchange poetry uh, in and outside of school. And uh, in this case, I know a family who writes poetry and reads um, to one another. And that that would be you, because Liam's your brother, right? Uh-huh. And there's one more brother coming. So what I found in working on poetry with people that it brings people together in connecting ways, whether you're a family or a group of friends or a school or a nursing home, there's all kinds of exciting ways that you can read poetry together and share it. So Hallie, uh, Allie, I'm sorry, um, you write some poetry. Uh, is there anything else you like to write? Um, not really. No, sticking mostly to poetry. Is there anything else you like to do when you're not doing schoolwork? Read. And reading, so you might see Mira at the library. <laughs> and anything else? Um, usually not. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe there's things outside that are interesting as well now that we have good weather days. Well, and uh, did you bring one or two poems for us? One. One, okay. And um, I'll ha what I'll have you do is come up. Is there a title to it? Strawberries. Strawberries, okay. And it's strawberry season. Show of hands if you like strawberries. Okay, we've got a lot of good strawberry fans out there, so you can get us a little hungry for strawberries, and I'll just back up and let you share your poem. Strawberries by Alison Palacios. Red, delicious, sweet, picked with red hands, best right off the plant. I love it with sugar. Okay, thank you. I forgot to tell you That's right, take a bow. <laughs> thank you. So, and I love it with sugar. So does that mean you take your strawberry and dip it in? Well. Once at my grandmother's house, she put in sugar. She put in, and that was the best way to have it? I guess. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. Well, you're getting me in the mood for some strawberries now. Um, so thank you for a delicious and sweet poem there. And I will give you a rose of your choice. And thank you again for sharing one of your poems you've written. You're welcome. One more hand for Allie. And there's one more in the Palacios family, and that is Andrew. Andrew, could you come on down and we'll clap for you? Do you feel like sharing a poem with us? Yeah. Will it be one that I read? Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you for coming. And I know that you like to write poetry in the way that Andrew, he's a little younger. How old are you? Five. Five years old. And uh, so it was very nice for you to come out here. And the way that Andrew writes poetry is he dictates it. He says it from his mouth because it's still inside. Uh, and so he tells his mom or someone to help write it down. 
And that's, you know, even if we weren't able to write for some reason, we had a broken right arm this summer, you can still write and you can still draw, well, draw no, you can still write by telling your ideas to someone else who could write them down. So I'm glad that you were able to do that and share your poem idea from inside. And um, so I see you have two poems for us then? Oh, yes. All right. And the first one, what is it? Can you come a little closer? Closer to the microphone. There you go. The first one is about, do you remember? Uh, I see a D word there. It's about like a night. A night? Yeah. Something that happens at night that begins with a D that you do in your bed maybe? You have a dream. dream. Right. It's a dream poem. And this is by Andrew. At night they lick their hands. The shining armor is so shiny. The knights are sitting around the table eating when a huge clan arrives. A big tournament breaks out between the two knight clans. Red, black, brown, white, orange, yellow, blue, silver, flying all around. Skunks, alligators, brown horses, and horses with suits of armor running and jumping. Each knight riding a horse standing on its head. Well, that's strange. <laughs> horse races, hopscotch running, all sorts of activities. And then I wake up. Wow. How about that? That's quite a dream. <coughs> Were you reading some night stories before then? Mm. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> the next one's a little different. It's not about knights in shining armor. It's a carrot poem. Now, uh, do you have a garden? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And are you growing carrots? Oh, uh, no. No? Can you think of one vegetable you are growing? I am growing beans. Some beans. Okay. Green or yellow? Green. Green beans. I just had those for dinner. All right. Here comes Andrew's carrot poem. I made a cardboard carrot, orange and green. It's not to eat, but to trick 14 rabbits in our yard. I want to see them nibble in the summer. I'll lay it in the grass. I'll wait with my binoculars. I'll wear a suit for watching, orange and green, of course. Wouldn't it be fun if my suit tricked the rabbits, too? And that is your carrot poem. Can we give a hand for Andrew? Would you like to take a bow? Well, it looks like you are having some fun having dreams and pretending about what you can do with rabbits. Does anybody have rabbits in their yard this year? I think uh, there are quite a few out there. I have a mother rabbit and a baby in our yard right by the driveway. Um, and they're coming out closer to the cars. Um, so I, I try to beat my horn and scare them away. I don't want them to get too close to the road. And you are thinking of a way to make sure rabbits don't help themselves to the garden. That's how you're looking after them, right? In the poem, anyway. Are you really going to make a suit to try to trick them? No. No? <laughs> Not now, anyway. Well, thank you for your poems, and please take a rose. All right. And one more hand for Andrew, please. Go back to and... I think I asked for two poems, if you have them, and if you're not, I'll just ask you maybe to talk a little bit more. And also to help, we'll put a little ode to Mrs. Martin together. And an ode is kind of a celebration poem. Pablo Neruda uh, is very famous for writing a whole book of odes where he celebrates all kinds of things, even things that are kind of hard in life. And he writes about socks, ode to my socks. And he writes about ode to an artichoke and all kinds of interesting things. And he sort of, as if he has a magnifying glass, he looks at close at it and he writes all these interesting words about what's so great about an artichoke or my smelly socks. So he's fun to read. Um, and I thought maybe we could write a couple words about Mrs. Martin when you come up here. So we have a couple different things to do. And I am beginning. Uh, and I think that's what the point is for. Morgan drags back. Can you help me welcome Morgan up here? I'll give my clap over here. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> so, Morgan, thank you for being first in Mrs. Martin's class. And can you tell me how your class um, got to writing about colors? How did that all happen? And just come um, a little closer to the mic, please. Uh, first, we read Hailstones and Halibut Bones. Oh, I know that book. Uh -huh. um, 
And then we brainstormed ideas and we thought of a color. Uh -huh. So what made you think of a color after reading Hailstones and Halibut Bones? Which is a book of poetry for children. There, in the book there were like all different colors oh, okay. and it kind of gave us ideas. Uh -huh. And what did the writers do about colors? I mean, you know, so what? Blue. What about blue? Um, like feelings, like about blue and what blue makes you think of. Okay, uh-huh. And did you have to close your eyes and think of a lot of things or did you make a list? We made a list. We made a list. Oh, that's interesting because these poems are wonderful about color and they're very detailed and they tend to be a bit, they're kind of long poems and it looks like you have permission to write about all kinds of ideas related to color. So um, I look forward to yours. Why don't you share it and then I'll ask you a few more questions. What is yellow? Yellow is the bright sunshine shining down on the great world of mine. The shining stars, the changing moon, and the black sparkling sky. The full moon is the size of the pie. Yellow is the grandson of sparkly gold, not the cousin of yucky mold. Your favorite sponge is bright yellow. Oh, how that SpongeBob is mellow. He lives in a juicy pineapple under the salty sea. Oh, that is yellow. Oh, yes, indeed. Spring has sprung, from summer has too. You can think of yellow. Oh, yes, sir, you. What did you think of? An idea popping in your brain? Let's hope it doesn't give you bad pain. Happy, cheerful, yahoo for you. A brand new pair of pajamas too. Garlic bread, salty popcorn, delicious cornbread. Are you hungry yet? Yellow furry hamster, do you have a pet? Yellow is peace, love, and happiness to the world. French fries are my favorite food. Those are all yellow and you can think yellow too. quite a few things there um, that are nice uh, thoughts about yellow, including SpongeBob SquarePants. Is he still around? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And French fries, of course, are still around. Furry hamsters, too. So you really let your imagination go and think about what's yellow and wonderful. Thank you. And um, did you bring another poem? Because uh, I realized that we would have time to have a few poems uh, each. And is this a serious poem? No. No. What kind of a poem is this that you brought? A limerick. A limerick. And if you step a little closer, can you tell us what a limerick is? Um, it's a really short poem that rhymes. Mm -hmm. The first line and the last line rhyme. And the middle, there's four lines, and the middle two lines rhyme. Mm -hmm. And is it serious, solemn? No. Is it funny? It's yeah. A little funny, meant to be a little funny. So let's listen uh, to your limerick by Morgan. There was a zebra named Bob whose favorite thing to do was sob. And when he was done, it was quarter to one, then he went to Rob for a job. <laughs> Thank you. One more hand for Morgan. Thank you very much. Morgan, thank you. And um, I didn't get to ask about you. When you're not in school writing limericks and poems about yellow all day, and you get out and it's going to be school vacation or the weekend, what is it that you like to do in your spare time? Um, I like to act and I like to do sports. Act and do sports. So you're very active, either spreading your arms for acting or to catch a ball or something, right? Kind of kick a ball. <laughs> All right, well, I'm glad that you're active inside and out. And um, I wanted to start you with Mrs. Martin's ode, if you'll help me. Um, so can you tell me one thing that you think is especially one of the best things about her as a teacher of this theory that you liked? She makes learning fun. Oh, there we go. That's a great starter. Thank you so much. And so that sounds like you have had fun this year in third grade and moving on to fourth grade next year. Congratulations, and thank you once again for coming up here to share your poems. One more hand for Morgan Dress. All right, and oh, you get to pick a rose here. There you go. Okay, thank you, Morgan. All right, next on my list. My list that is hiding. We have Evan, 
I had a helper. We have Evan Sizitsky. So come on down, Evan Sizitsky. Help me clap for him. Hi, Evan. Um, all right. So can you tell me, first of all, what is your color? That you My color is red. Red. Okay, so we're moving from yellow to red now. And um, when you were picking a color poem, what made you choose red? I noticed you have it on your shirt. Um, it kind of just came to me. It just like uh -huh. the color red. Do red. Write about red. Is it something like that? Yeah. yeah. Mysterious. Uh huh. Ghost came and told me. What's that? Ghost came and told oh, me. Oh, I see. Like a spirit oh, calling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, so, red. Did you write about good and bad things about red or uh, more Mostly good? Mostly good. Mostly good. All right. Can you share it with us? And I'll step back and you can yeah. read about red. Red. Red can be clothes in a store, in the color of a rose in a gourd. It can be a it can be a butterfly's colorful wings. Red can be a shiny diamond on a ring. Red are the stripes on the American flag. Red is bravery. Red can be the flames of fire. Red can be a big lot. Red can be a big liar. Someone's glasses can be red. That's what the great color red is. Maybe you'll go hunting for my favorite color sometime. Oh, thank you. Would you like to take a bow? Thank you. And so you have some really interesting uh, imaginings about the color red, and uh, you let your mind wander off there. It's a very good poem about the color. Thank you. Is that, and did we say, is that your favorite color? Yeah. It is, okay. Well, um, and did you write any other poems in your class? I did. With Mrs. Martin? It's, I forgot it at my uh, house. Uh -huh. Is it a funny limerick also? Yes. Uh -huh. It's well. about a fat cat named Matt. All right. Can you tell everybody? I think that's a good title. <laughs> a fat cat named Matt. Fat cat named Matt. And there's uh, four other lines probably to it, right? Yeah. Since limericks are a five-line poem. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to hear that sometime. So it sounds like you've been busy writing in third grade. And when you're not in school, what is it that you like to do when you get home? Or? If it's sunny out, I like to go on my water slide and my trampoline and play video games. Oh, wow. Well, that's uh, quite an array of uh, choices. Uh, and sometimes are, read. I sometimes like to read. Sometimes what? Like to read. I like to read as well. But mostly play video games, go on my water slide and my trampoline. Uh-huh. Well, that sounds good. A mix of indoor and outdoor. And play catch with my dad. And catch with your dad also. Well, that sounds great. And don't forget to write a couple more poems, maybe in the summer. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll, uh, I'd like to give you a rose to take also for sharing your poetry today. That's kind of like red, hmm? Can everyone give a hand once again for Evan Sigurd? Thank you, Evan. Evan! Oh, Evan, one more thing. I'm sorry. Uh, what is one thing that you like about your teacher best uh, that she does this year? She really works very hard to make it fun for us in third grade. Excellent. Thank you so much for that line. And now I'd like to call Anna Nagloski. Can Anna come to the microphone? Hi, Anna. How are you doing? Good. Oh, well, I'm glad that you came, and you're part of Mrs. Martin's class. Mm -hmm. And I think you brought one poem uh, also. But I memorized my liver. You memorized your Oh, so you'll be sharing both with us. All right. Well, um, I look forward to hearing both. Why don't we start with your color poem and take a little break, and then we'll go to the limerick. So go right up close to that mic, too. There you go. What is blue? Blue is a sharp crayon, even your glittery eyes. Maybe even a hat that is striped like a tiger. Blue jays are blue for sure. It can be a feeling like when you're down. It could be a box that is cardboard or maybe an old dusty blue box. Water. Water is blue when you're on a cruise. Flowers are blue in your garden like blue bonnets. The pillow you put your head upon at night could be blue or striped. The ribbon that holds your medal you won for running can be blue. Even a scratchy old knit scarf blowing in the cold blue air. Okay, thank you. 
and I see you have some blue on. Do you see uh, the blue that Anne is wearing? And I see you have some blue behind you from the nice lights here at H Camp. However, I hate to tell you, but your toenails are green. <laughs> <laughs> but they're lovely green to match your eyes. Um, so I think it's interesting, um, Anna, how you mixed blue also and thought of some things that maybe are a little hard or not so good as well as some good things. You really thought in a big circle about the color blue. And so also another very interesting color poem. So I, some of these things I've never thought about. And now, after the color and the serious poem, we have a limerick. And is yours mm -hmm. have a little bit of funny in it? Yeah. Or some imagination? So if you could just step up a little closer again, and you can slowly read your limerick to us. Once there was a hamster named Joe that got eaten by a cat named Joe. When the birds chirped, the cat, the cat burped and got hit with a bow. Got hit with a what? A bow. A bow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the first line again there once was a hamster. hamster. Does that mean you have a hamster? No. No, you just, there's a lot of thinking about hamsters in third grade, it sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> and that is a fun uh, kind of except not for the hamster, right? <laughs> so thank you. And um, so Anna, what do you like to do besides write poems at school? Um, I play soccer. Play soccer. Okay. Do we talk about soccer? Anyone like soccer here? Raise your hand. Okay. I know we start soccer pretty early uh, here. We've got some soccer players and we have other things. All right. Soccer, writing, and now you're finishing third grade. You're ready for fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me one thing you've appreciated about Mrs. Martin this year? Um, she's always there to help me. Always there to help. I think teachers like to hear that, if, if that is uh, true about them. There to help me. So, good words, thank you. I would like to offer you a rose. And thank you very much for sharing your poetry today. One more hand for Anna Glasper. Now, I would like to call Kyle Perkins up. Here you are. It's such a long walk for you, isn't it, Kyle? <laughs> now, Kyle asked me to guess his name earlier. And lo and behold, I picked the right one. It, w it was a strange and wonderful experience. So I'm glad to have you here to share your poetry with us. What was your color of choice for Red. the Red. Oh, I should have guessed that, right? That I would have had a record for good guessing. Well, I'm glad you could read some red and also share your red poem. Um, so why don't we take care of that first? Do you have a limerick after as well? All right. So I'll step back and you step as close as you can to the mic and read slowly into the microphone. And let's hear about red. Red by Kyle Perkins. Red is a stick of dynamite about to burst to flames. Red is a shiny Dorito bag Mario threw out. Spicy pepperonis can be red. Don't forget real peppers. No doubt red is Knuckles fighting Mario. Red is a shy feeling. Red is Mr. Krabs closing his store while eating a hot dog. Red is a swirly fruit punch. Red can be blood coming from a little butterfly. Red can smell like ketchup or raspberry pie. Red can be a heart pumping without stopping. Red can be a stop no one minds. Red also is pens, pants, and markers. Red is Dr. Eggman. Red is a crush cup being slurped. Red is spicy salsa. Red is a clownfish eating a shrimp. Red can also be a stuffed animal wearing a bow tie. Red is a magnet stuck on a refrigerator. Wow. Well, thank you. We'll give you a hand for that. I can see you really stretched your mind in thinking about different red things, and I hear a lot of imagination. I hope you keep writing. Do you like to read? A little bit? Mm -hmm. Well, keep going. Uh, X.J. Kennedy is a famous poet around the world, and he writes a lot of children's poetry. Maybe you've heard of him in school. He came here in January, and that was his big advice for poets of all age, ages, not only to write poetry, but to be reading a lot as well to influence your writing. So thank you for all of those um, ponderings about red. And now you have something a little on the light side for us, a limerick, a little bit of funny in there. All right, so I'll step back for a limerick by Kyle. There was a turtle named Pickle who stepped on a prickle, and he started to bleed, then he fell on a weed, and then it started to tickle. 
Okay. Thank you, Kyle. I was getting worried about the turtle there, you know, and then you turned it around and it tickled. So I'm glad I'm going to go home happy about the turtle being okay now. Thank you for um, showing your funny side by writing that limerick also. And when you're not writing poetry and limericks at school and being busy, what do you like to do after school? Or what are you hoping? Play sports. You like a lot of sports. Is that what you do in the summer? Yeah. What's the, your favorite? Soccer. Soccer. Okay. Well, I hope you have a lot of fun soccer days and not too many uh, mud or downpour days for you. But when you're inside, you, you can read and write poetry. Maybe. Think about it. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you about Mrs. Martin. Never makes mistakes. All right. Never yeah. makes mistakes. I actually have another question for you, too. What color would you think of when you think of Mrs. Martin? Uh, I don't know. If you were to think of her, and you were to look at her, think of a color that represents Mrs. Martin. Pink. There we go. You remind I think us of her favorite color is pink. OK. I don't really know. That is wonderful. You just contributed to the ode. Thank you. And I would like to present you with a rose. And thank you for your poetry today. Kyle Perkins, everybody. And now I'd like to call William Hubner to come on down to the mic here. Help me welcome William. Hi, William. Hi. Right, you've been waiting a while to share your poetry. Um, thank you for being patient, and thank all of you for um, hanging in there. We've been hearing a lot of poetry, some serious about colors, and some kind of funny. Did you bring us two? Yep. A serious and a funny? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. And um, would your color be blue? No. No. i just guessing because of your shirt. I guessed wrong. OK. What was your color? Green. Green. OK. Close. <laughs> And when you thought about a green poem, did you go for just good things or anything you could think of? Anything good, I could think good, of. Good, interesting, not so good. Mm -hmm. Mold on bread when you leave it in the fridge too long? No. No, not that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward to hearing what you have. I need um, to do the limerick first. You would prefer to do the limerick first? Yep. All right. Well, um, why don't you step up to the mic then and we'll start with a little humor. All right. There you go, William. There was a bear named Nair who ate a poisonous pear, then fell to the ground and heard a hound, then he ripped his underwear. <laughs> Thank you, William. <laughs> That's interesting. You got us to laugh, and I was not expecting the ripped his underwear part. So <laughs> thank you for the funny limerick. <laughs> And now we'll get to hear about green. So I'll step back and please share your green poem with us. Green is the color of the great nature, the color of a pine tree. Green is yellow and blue mixed together and the sea. Green is fresh grass. It is also bad because it's the color of cartoon gas. Green is Luigi wearing a green hat. Green is mountains. It is also a sick flying bat. Green is moss. It's also a pickle. Green is flowers that are sure to tickle. Well, OK. Would you like to take a bow? And we'll give you a bow. There's a lot to think about there. Green and pickles, and green is a sick bat. Uh, that's an interesting thought. Have you ever seen a sick bat? Or no. just your imagination? Because again, that's one way you can write, is just from imagining things. And if the bat was kind of queasy, had a stomach ache, maybe it was green. Uh huh. Well, that's a wonderful poem. Thank you for both. And so, William, when you're not writing poetry, what is it you like to do out in the world? Um. Play baseball outside, play video games, play card games with my mom, and play catch with my dad. Oh, wow. You have a lot of different things going on. Card games. Uh, I haven't heard that up for a while. What is the card, best card game you like to play? Um, poker. Poker. <laughs> and, and do you play for some uh, reward? No. No. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, good for you. <laughs> so, well, it sounds like you have a lot of fun in your time off, and I congratulate you for moving on to fourth grade. And in thinking about your teacher again, how about this? When your teacher smiles, you look like, and we want to think of something, because we're in the ode track, so something positive when your teacher smiles. What could she... 
what could we think, poetically speaking? Uh, uh, or, let's see, we did a color. If you smile, what happens? Makes me happy. Makes me happy. There you go. Wonderful. Could you pick a rose? And I'm going to write that down. And we will give a hand for William and his poetry. Thank you, William. You can go on and sit down. All right. And we have just a few more coming up. We have one, two, three, four poets. And that will be the end of our program. So right now, I'd like you to just, if you need to, stick your hands up for a little stretch. Up and then down to your toes. We have four more to go. And I thank you for your patience. You've been waiting a long time and then there will be cookies. And after stretching, now we have to go back to quiet so we can all listen and support each other. And I am calling up to the stage Gigi Prabhakaran. Help me welcome Gigi up. Hi, Gigi. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah. Okay. All right. And come on up. I see you have a red dress on, and you're looking very elegant this evening. And thank you for coming up to share some poetry. And I'm wondering what color you selected for the color poems. Are you going to make me guess? Yeah. All right. Should I guess? Yes. Because I'm so accurate. I think red. No. <laughs> Alas. Okay. Uh, I give up. Um, uh, what do you think out there? Blue. We have a lot of blues. Is it blue? Yes. It's blue. Uh, must be classmates. <laughs> well, I look forward to hearing about blue, and you can step up very, very close and read slowly about blue, please. Blue is the night. Blue is the sky. Blue is the color of a butterfly. Blue is the ocean, blue is a scary book, blue is the revolution and a t-shirt, blue is a water bottle, a karate belt, blue is a seat, blue is a Yankees hat, blue is the American flag, blue is a baseball bat. Okay, thank you. Give it a clap for that. Now you said Yankees hat. Does that mean you're a Yankees and not a Red Sox fan? I don't know. You, oh, good thing to say when you're on TV. <laughs> That's a wonderful blue poem. Thank you. And do you have, now you're going to turn it around for a little humor for us? Yeah. Yeah, something funny in your limerick? Did you have fun writing it? Yeah. All right, good. Well, please let us hear that next. There once was a turtle named Phil who tried to walk up a hill. When he walked up a cat, he fell very flat and he had to sleep on a mill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. One more hand. Well, thank you very much. Um, and do you enjoy writing when you're in school? Sometimes. Sometimes. And are there other things you like to do in your life? Yeah. What do you especially come up close? And I wonder what it is Gigi likes to do other than writing in school. Can you tell us? I like to play soccer. Soccer. OK, we have another soccer player here. Hooray for soccer. And when it's rainy outside and you're inside, what is it you like to do then? Um, I play violin. Violin as well. Well, maybe you can come and play at H Camp sometime. I'm happy to hear that. I love uh, musical instruments. And I'm wondering if you could help me um, with part of Mrs. Martin's poem. You make us get excited about learning when we... Can you fill in that blank? Um... What do you like when she, uh, that you do in classroom? What's your favorite thing you learn about? I like to do math. To do math. All right. Well, my husband would like to hear that because he was a lover of numbers and math at school. So he's probably home cheering when he watches this. And uh, that's good to hear. So Mrs. Martin is talking about good things about numbers in your class as well as poetry. Excellent. Well, that uh, helps to add to our poem, so thank you very much. And please take a rose. And as Gigi goes off, can everyone give her one more hand, please? Thank you, Gigi. All right, how is our list doing? 
I have a few more. And next I would like to call up Nicole Woodward. Help me clap for Nicole. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> it's nice to see you today. Thank you for coming. Okay. Do you think she wrote about blue? Yes. I think so. Did you write about blue? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad I'm right for once now. Back <laughs> on track. Well, thank you for reading your poem about blue, and thank you for wearing some blue, looking in your closet and doing an inventory, and bringing your blue eyes today as well. <laughs> Please share a poem about blue with us. What is blue? It's a glimpse of sparkling eyes, sparkling blue eyes in the sun on a cool day. The blue sky is a feeling. Blue is a nice, warm, fuzzy, warm sweater. Blue is a jumping on a clean page. Blue is shorts on a hot summer's day, swimming at the beach. My eyes is crayons making genius on a page. A blue tongue is gum being chewed on a gentle day. Blue swirls are marbles racing down the road. Who will win? Blue is a anger drowning down to the midnight zone. Wow. Okay. And give a hand for that. <laughs> a blue tongue. I hadn't thought about that. Did you have a blue tongue once? Uh, yeah, after I get chill zones. Chill zones, okay. Yeah. Everyone have a chill zone. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. What is a chill zone? Uh, it's at my mom's store. Uh -huh. And it's just like a slushy, but it a tastes slushy. really good. Ah, oh, okay. Well, may you have many wonderful blue tongues in the future. And enjoy marbles and ocean and things like that, too. Thank you. And do you have a limerick yes. as well? Something a little funny for us. Okay, yes. you ready with your ears for a funny poem? There once was a bee named Bug who always went on the rug. But then he died one day, and everyone said, hooray. But then there was more bugs in the mug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Are, are you dealing with bugs at home? No. A little bit? No. No, uh -huh. not no. All right, I just chased a yellow jacket out of my kitchen today because uh, we didn't really want him inside or her. But um, it's something that does come with summer. And also with summer, when you're on vacation, what is it you like to do? Um, I like to play sports and go to Maine and swim in the ocean. Swim in the very cold ocean of Maine, isn't that right? It's not that cold. Not that cold? Okay. All right. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> and have fun swimming in the cold ocean of Maine. I go once um, in summer into the water, maybe up to here in Maine. Uh, but that's wonderful that you go swimming there. Please take a rose and thank you for your wonderful poetry today and have a good summer. And let's give a hand again for Nicole Woodward. <laughs> Two more to go. And, uh, oh, Nicole, I'm sorry. Uh, can I grab you back up here for a minute? Okay. I have a lot of lists, a lot of papers here. Thinking about Mrs. Martin, we will remember the way that you, what's one thing you'll remember about Mrs. Martin? Um, uh, the way she makes me laugh when we're learning. All right. Well, laughter is a good thing. So thank you very much. You can go onto your seat <laughs> one more time. <laughs> laugh when learning. Okay. And now I believe I am calling... Can I have some help? Sarah, Sarah Kang. So please come up to the, and you don't have a long walk, do you, Sarah Kang? No. So welcome. And you are also in Mrs. Martin's class, and I see you have a, a long poem about color there. And looking at your yellow shorts, I'm wondering if you're writing about yellow. Yeah. And I also saw your paper. <laughs> so I would step back and I want to hear your ideas about yellow. Let's hear what happens with yellow when Sarah thinks about it. Yellow is a warning and a canary chirping in the morning, a fresh ripe banana hanging from a tree, dandelions and sunflowers showing their beauty to you and me. The stars in the sky light up the dark night and the moon is shining bright tonight. Yellow is a feeling that's nice to have. Its song makes you smile instead of frown. Its cousin is the color of a king's crown. Yellow is warm, sour and buttery and a butterfly, all pretty and fluttery. Yellow is a lion prowling the plain. It's proud of its big yellow shaggy mane. So you, dear, so you see, my dear friend, yellow can be found just around the bend. We'll take it back. <laughs> may, 
messy again. We have sour and buttery and all kinds of fluttery, pretty and fluttery. Uh, some of the words in there are rhyming, and you don't have to rhyme, but some of our older poems do, and you can do it if you want. And Sarah said she likes to rhyme, put a little bit of rhyming in, so that was fun to hear. And now also fun to hear, we have a limerick. So put on your listening ears to hear another limerick by Sarah this time. There once was a mouse named Nick who ate garbage and got sick and went to a gnome who told him to go home but ran into a tick. <laughs> oh, well, the poor mouse named Nick. <laughs> and what was that? Who ate garbage and got sick? That sounds like my dog. My dog does that kind of thing. And then the next thing you think about a gnome. Hmm, have you been thinking about gnomes much lately? Sort of. A little bit of gnome thinking. Well, very uh, imaginative limerick as well as poem. Thank you very much. And so Sarah is also finishing third grade, and you're going off to celebrate vacation. And what is it that you like to do in your free time? Um, read and play sports. Read and sports. So that's a nice mix. I've been hearing a lot of that. It's good to hear. Not hearing too much TV. That's a good thing. And uh, so I wish you a good summer as well. And I'm going to ask for your help. We have just two lines left for Mrs. Martin. Okay, so how about when we see you first thing in the morning, you... Remind us to do our schoolwork. Okay, that's a great thought. Our schoolwork. As long as it's not you're still wearing your pajamas, right? Yeah, yeah that, would, that would not be right. <laughs> so thank you very much. That's a good thought for the poem, and we're almost ready to read it out loud. Thank you for your poetry, and please take a rose. How many roses do we have left? Just two, and we have one more reader. So thank you very much, Sarah. We'll clog you back to your seat. And very last and not least, I believe we have Chris North. Please come to the microphone, Chris North. There you are. Hi, Chris. You've had to be ultra patient being last on the lineup. Yeah. Thank you for that. And come on a little closer, because I'd like you to be heard when you're reading your poetry. Yeah. And did you write about color uh, in the classroom? Yeah. Uh-huh. And was your color green? No, it was white. White. I got surprised again. And were you the only color white uh, that some was chosen in your class? No. No. There were yeah, there are other whites. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, are you ready to read it? Yep. All right, so I'm going to step back, and I just want you to stand uh, up to the mic and read like slowly. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we can hear all your ideas about white. Okay. White is snow collapsing to the ground. White is delicious milk falling in my cup. A crayon, a present, or a shirt that's really pleasant. Paper, a whiteboard, the sky, eggs that we can't deny. The clouds, ice, and paint that looks so nice. White is a clean looking sock that really rocks. White feels cold when I'm outside. And white is a spooky ghost on Halloween night. That's it. Thank you. You have some wonderful images about white eggs that we can't deny and clouds and ice. And I was thinking maybe yeah. you should talk to Erin about the good thoughts of white milk. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. And did you bring a limerick? Uh, no. Not a limerick today? That's OK. Did you write one in your class? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, and I typed it, too. And you typed it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what the idea was, uh, what you wrote about for a limerick? I wrote about a dog named Charlie. Well, and I'm going to get him someday, too. A dog named Charlie? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you're hoping for a dog at home? Yeah, and uh -huh. again, like, maybe next month. Maybe next month, okay. Well, good luck to you in waiting for a dog named Charlie. That's a good name for a dog. Okay. And uh, can you tell, you're almost done with school also. Um, what is it that you're hoping to do for your summer vacation? Um, the first thing I'll do is go to Florida. Florida, okay. And maybe go in water there? Yeah. Or uh, out on the beach? Uh, in, just, just playing in my... Like, What's um, that? On an uncle's pool. In the pool. Pool's yeah. a good place to go when you're in Florida. Well, I hope you have a great start to summer vacation, and I hope you keep writing some poetry as well.
And I have one last thing for you to help me with, and that's the last line of Mrs. Martin's ode poem. All right. We, we wish you a happy summer when you could have a chance to, what do you think Mrs. Martin would like to do when she's on summer vacation? Um, you can even use your imagination if you don't know. I don't know, and I don't really have like imagination about it. No. Uh, what do you think Mrs. Martin likes to do? Um, like she, um, she always watches baseball games. I heard. There we go. Does she like the Red Sox? Um, maybe. Maybe. Or okay. the Yankees. Or the Yankees. Okay. Well, I'll leave that part blank, and she can figure it out. She doesn't like the Yankees. Oh. Well. Um, sometimes it's good not to commit yourself if you don't know. Can we have one more hand for Chris Noor? Thank you, Chris. And can you? All right, we're all done with student poetry here. Um, you've been doing a lot of clapping for everyone as they come up, as they leave, as they read their poetry. I'd like to have just what excellent writers and readers of poetry you all are um, at your age in elementary school. Very impressive. And so a great big hand for all of our student poets today. Really wonderful. Thank you. I am thanking you. It was really a wonderful experience. I can't wait to see it on TV. And now, before we end, I would like to share your ode for Mrs. Martin, supporter of poetry in your class. Mrs. Martin, ode to Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin, teacher of third grade students, supporter of that important art of poetry. We write this ode to you. You make learning fun. You work hard and make us learn in third grade. You are always there to help. You remind us of the color pink. When we see you first thing in the morning, you remind us to do our schoolwork. When you smile, you look like you make us all happy. You make us get excited about learning when we do math. We will remember the way you make us laugh when we are learning. We wish you a happy summer when you can have a chance to watch baseball games. And we wish you many happy days and interesting poems in your new classroom of students next year. How about that? You all wrote a group ode to your teacher now. And since she couldn't be here, I bet she'll like that. And now you can write some more odes and poems at home. And maybe your parents can write some, too, and come out here and read at Wake Up and Spell the Poetry. I would like to thank you all for your time here. You'll get a chance to meet and congratulate each other and have some lemonade and cookies in the back. Please go slow. There's plenty for everyone. And I would like to thank you all for this wonderful poetry event once again. Thank you for coming out.